Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. Saints, has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad. Keep sharing on Facebook. Keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. And so there is a provision in scripture that guides believers to know how to live in challenging times. Most believers do not have the wisdom and intelligence to live in times of trouble and in times of turbulence. Hallelujah. Especially for those of us who God has granted the privilege of living in this side of the country. It is important that we are equipped. There are people who by reason of location they have an advantage and they may not necessarily see the necessity of teachings like this. But it is important that God's people receive a spiritual orientation on how to live and to thrive at times like this. So I'm going to be sharing with you very briefly as a charge tonight. Be exposing us to four strategies as revealed from scripture that would help us to survive and to thrive and to walk in dominion even at perilous times very quickly number one the first strategy that the bible gives the believer is to be strong in the lord ephesians chapter 6 please verse 10 be strong in the lord it says finally brethren be strong in the lord please can you give us amplified is it possible to get amplified of this rendition Amplified gives a very beautiful rendition of this verse. It says, in conclusion, let me read for you. Be strong in the Lord. It says, be empowered through your union with him. Draw your strength from him that strength, from him that strength which his boundless might provides. Draw your strength. Be empowered through the consciousness of your union with him. The first survival strategy that the Bible gives us at times as this is to be strong in the Lord. And Daniel chapter 11 from verse 32 now gives us further clarity on the basis of our strength in this kingdom. Daniel 11 and verse 32 that if you want to be strong it says but the people that do know they are God. They shall be strong and shall do exploits. So Daniel connects to the revelation of Paul by letting us know that if you desire strength and stamina and capacity, it is derived from your knowledge of God. Is someone learning now? You are strong in the Lord to the degree to which you are rooted in the knowledge of him. Most people do not know God. The ignorance of who God is, the boundless might that he has will keep you in fear and defeat. You may never be able to draw strength, especially at times like this. All you need to do is to go on social media, 
or put on your television or radio or whatever and one news after the other one kidnap one bomb blast one threat and all of those kinds of things and when you are consumed by those information and you do not know god chances are excellent that you will not have any strength in you again are we together prophesy to yourself say be strong So we draw our strength in this kingdom from our knowledge. Our knowledge. Paul said, but I, I mean, that was Peter now. But I know whom I have believed, he says. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day. There is something about God when you know. When you know God and you understand his character, fear dies permanently from your life. Hear what I'm telling you now. Look up, please. The Bible lets us know that the prophet, prophet Elisha, that he sat down and all kinds of people came, the army, they came and surrounded him and he was, he was sitting in confidence and his servant was so fearful, there was something the prophet knew that was the basis of his confidence. He says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. What, I, I cannot fear what man would do to me. Many believers do not know God. And so when perilous times come, we scrounge around and we begin to act and, and manifest antichrist qualities. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 18, I believe it is, Apostle Peter was encouraging us to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, John 17, John 17, give it to us verse 3. Jesus was praying and he said, This is eternal life, that they may know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Please get my teaching knowing God. We may not have the time to go into it, but I've done a teaching knowing God. You can go to our, our, our platforms. I think it should be on our YouTube channel also. Knowing God. I teach there that there are four biblical provisions to know God. Number one is scripture. The first way we are given the allowance to know God is through the study of scripture. And that from a child, Thou hast known the Holy Scripture, which is able to make you wise unto salvation. Are we together? You must know God. Paul, even at the end of his life, at the height of his apostolic ministry and his achievement, he said that I may know him. Believers must contend for the knowledge of God. An experiential knowledge of God. Not just a theoretical knowledge. Not that we just sing and then when times come, because let me tell you this, if you are alive in these days that we are living in, your faith will be tested once and again. Your stamina will come from your persuasion as to who you know God to be. Are we together? Number one, scripture. I taught here in that teaching that the first way we know God is scripture. What does the scripture reveal? That Jesus said, ye err not knowing the scriptures. He says, for the scriptures testify of me. So you can use the scripture to know God. What about God do you know from scripture? Number one, his character. When you study scripture, you learn the character of God. Number two, when you study scripture, you learn his modus operandi. The way God behaves. His character and his methodologies. So if you do not submit yourself to the study of scripture, and unfortunately, I, I admit to you that our generation is gradually becoming lazy as far as our passion for the word is concerned. We pray, and there are many people who pray, but the value of your prayer is derived from the understanding of scripture. If you are not sound in scripture, your prayer will largely be shadow boxing. It's the reason why there is tremendous dissipation of spiritual energy, but little result. Because a man can pray amiss, even if with passion. 
Are we together? This is very important. So number one, we know God through scripture. Number two, the second biblical pathway to the knowledge of God is by studying his names. The names of God are a capture, a revelation of the multifaceted dimensions of him. All of the names of God as revealed in scripture, they are hosts of a revelation about God. Who shall I tell Pharaoh had sent me? He said, I am that I am. Every time they encountered God in a spectacular way, they named that place, they built a monument around that experience and captured that experience in a name. So that every time they wanted to see that dimension again, they would invoke that name. Hallelujah. Very, very important. Number three, how do we know God? as revealed from the bible the third way we know god is through the study of jesus jesus himself the bible calls him the express image of the invisible god hebrews chapter 1 when you read verse 3 verse 1 says god who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us through the prophets he said as in these last days spoken to us by his son whom he had appointed to be heir of all things by whom also he made the walls verse 3 it says who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person so jesus christ is god incarnate john chapter 1 and verse 1 in the beginning he says was the word and the word was with god and he says the word was god verse 2 says the same was in the beginning with god so when you study Jesus, you learn God by observing Jesus. I've taught you, many of you who have paid attention to these teachings, um, I taught you that Jesus came for many reasons. He did not just come to die alone. There were many other things he came to achieve. One of the principal ministries of Jesus when he walked upon the earth was he came as a marking script to correct our understanding about God. Because until Jesus came, there was no accurate knowledge of God by any man. The prophet saw in times and shadows. And there was a mix of many things, a Judaism and all of this. There were many things they, they credited to God that God had no hand in it. Are we together? When you read the Old Testament from the lens of the prophets, you will come up with a plethora of confusions. Because it, it misrepresents God on many grounds. And so Jesus came as a correction. So everything the Bible tells you in the Old Testament that God was, we study Jesus as a verification system. If the Bible says God is love, we have a right to probe God until we see love captured in Jesus. So everything we did not see captured in the ministry of Jesus, we are safe to assume that is not consistent with the character of God, even if revealed by the prophets. Are you learning now? So more than just dying for your sin, the Bible calls him the author and the finisher of our faith. The word finisher there is perfecter of our faith, not just ending it. He begins it and perfects it. There are many things we have been told about God that are wrong. And if you do not learn your knowledge of God from Jesus, you see, it will affect your relationship with God because you will not be able to relate with God being that you do not know certain things about God. For instance, the Bible tells us that God is love. That is a powerful revelation. It should guard your heart as you deal with God. He is not just some angry person waiting with passion to vent vengeance on you. No. If that is your mindset about God, someone deceived you. You have to study God and study Jesus. Are we together? Yes. If you ever receive the comfort that God finds joy in your failure and mediocrity, then we look at Jesus. Did he ever see anybody who was in a condition that was not ideal and left that person. And if he did leave that person, what was the basis of leaving the person? 
There were people who were not healed in the Bible, for instance. And the Bible credits they are not being healed. Not to the unwillingness of Jesus to heal them, but to the, their unbelief. The Bible says Jesus even marveled. Many times in scripture, the Bible will say, they brought him the oppressed, he healed them all. When he saw the blind, he healed them. That means this knowledge of God will sponsor your dealings with God. That every time you pray, you know that at the back end of your prayer is a passionate father willing to answer as revealed by Jesus. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. He stopped. So if I call upon God, I expect an answer because Jesus came as a revelation of God. Are we together now? Many of us have come from, respectfully speaking, different denominations and different Christian circles and most of our models, as far as painting the picture of God is concerned, even by well-meaning people have been corrupted and aberrated and there is something about our understanding of God that needs adjustment. So we look to Jesus. We learn God as we study Jesus. Literally reading the Gospels from Matthew, Mark, Luke and John exposing Jesus. The Bible does not hide anything about Jesus. It exposes his personal life. It exposes his relationship life. It exposes his ministerial life. It exposes his understanding of family. So every, whenever you are looking for God's perspective on any matter, study the earthwork of Jesus. How did he approach those matters? This is how we know God. And then the last key that I gave in that teaching as to how we know God is experience. Experience. Experience is very powerful. It can teach us some things about God. You want to stand in these days, you must know God. There are many preachers who do not know God. Can I tell you this? Men and women of God, the confidence from whence we'll be able to teach God's people will be derived from our personal experience with God. It will be difficult for you to advocate certain dimensions of God if it is not a revelation to you. For instance, it is a risk to shout and say God can heal when you have not pressed into that dimension because there will always be a need for a demonstration of that which you believe. Does God deliver people from calamity? Oh, read your Bible. Read your Bible. Time will fail me to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. Men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions. It's in your Bible. So I know and I am safe to believe, not assume, that God can deliver. The psalmist said, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy of praise. So shall I be saved from my enemies. God is able to deliver. I need not be afraid. What can man do to me? Now, let me tell you the truth, believers. If you do not believe this, anything will kill you. Anything will sweep you off your feet. You will need to know that God is not only a savior. He can be a shield and a defense. That's what the Bible says. It says the name of the Lord his names, his various offices are a strong tower. You can enter into any of the name as a revelation and you are secured. Let me tell you, the evil that is physical that you see is by far less than the spiritual evils around you. When you hear that maybe there are terrorists or whatever, that is enough to bring fear. But whether or not you hear anything, the evils that happen per 24 hour is enough to sweep and destroy you. You see the way people die around like chickens. Somebody just gets off headache, headache and he dies. The psalmist gave us a revelation already. He says, thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day. Have you seen them? But they fly every day, including now as I'm talking. The noisome pestilence, the destruction that wasted in noonday. The first spiritual strategy for surviving perilous times is that you must know God. You must know God. There are things I know about God and I trust Him. Ah. 
You see, let me tell you. When you have not had an experience where your knowledge of God now defends you, your confidence may not be strong. Are we together now? Yes. It takes the knowledge of God to do the things that we do. It takes the knowledge of God to go the places that we go. What do you know about God? What do you know about God with respect to his power to save? What do you know about God with respect to his power to preserve? What do you know about God with respect to his power to redeem? What do you know about God with respect to his mercy, with respect to his grace? What do you know about God with respect to his judgment? Listen, these days are not the days for playing games with your spiritual life. You must obtain grace to settle down and become a student of scripture and learn. It was the psalmist that said, the Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. He was not taught. It was something he found. There was something Jacob did not know about God that made him abort a powerful experience that would have changed his life. As a result of not having that experience, he paid the price for 20 years in the house of Laban. The next time God will come, he had learned through pain something about God that if your name and what is on your head is not changed, you can suffer and be under duress. And he held him, he said, I will not let you go. He was not holding his hands. He was holding his integrity. God, I know you. Leave me for the day breaker. He said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Hear how God blesses. What is your name? I am Jacob. Thou shalt no more be called Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, you have had power with God and prevailed. He touched the whole of his thigh and blessed him. The Bible says he called the name of the place Peniel. And the sun arose for him. I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. Please take the time to know God. The journey that you are about to embark on for the remaining days that we have to spend on this earth is a journey that will thrive on personal revelation. Thank God for the ministry of the fivefold. But as they dish you that word, you have to transfer that theoretical knowledge that does not stand the test of time. You need to walk as a believer who is confident in the fact that he knows God. He said, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Is that true? Let not the strong man glory in his strength. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But he said, let him that glory and glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me. When you know about God and someone brings a negative prophecy for you and says, my brother, I had a dream. You are dead tomorrow. The person may not be wrong. But there is something you know about God. It gives you security. When Isaiah the prophet came and spoke over Hezekiah. Put your house in order. You will die. He said prophet I respect you. Go. Leave me and God. I know what to tell him. He turned his face to the wall and said remember. Is there no book of remembrance he was saying. Remember how I've worked diligently. And God changed that prophecy. If you don't know God, people will use the prophetic to cheat you. Especially in the days we are living in. There are people who became defeated because of something they heard. Someone will look at you and tell you, oh, Zaria, unfortunately, there is nothing. Your life is, you are just miserable. Your life is over. No school, no work, no money, no nothing, no favor. And you believe that because there is something about God you do not know. Where is the God that made light in Goshen when there was darkness in Egypt? You see, the people that do know their God shall be strong and shall do exploits. Is someone learning? Number two, very quickly. In fact, let me finish up number one. I wrote here, commit to the ministry of study, the ministry of prayer, and the ministry of fellowship. Please write it down. There are four things 
that the apostles did, the early church did. I, I, will, I will come there shortly, but let's just look at it. Acts chapter 2 and verse 42. There are four basic things. And they continued steadfastly. Number one, in the apostles' doctrine. Number two, fellowship. Number three, breaking of bread. Number four, prayers. This is what they did continually. This is not the time to run away from the study of the word. This is the time to obtain grace from God to be disciplined and sit with the word. You are a student here, don't say Asu is on strike. If you are in, 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 you know, in Ebi or any of the institutions that is on strike, don't use the opportunity to waste your time away and just say, I keep gisting. No, no. That is see it as a destiny opportunity to catch up. That there are things you would not have had the time to do. Now you can wake up in the morning and you can stay with the word. It takes time to know God. There is no fast knowing God. Mm -mm. It is line upon line, precept upon precept. May that grace come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Can I tell you, everything that fights your passion for the study of the word, fights your passion for prayer, these two, it has destroyed your potential for growth. Let me repeat that everything that fights your passion for the constructive study of the word of God, fights your passion for prayer, has fought your potential for spiritual growth. No matter how spiritual you think you are, the formula remains the same. Acts chapter 6 and verse 4, but we will give ourselves continually to the word, to prayer, and to the ministry of the word. Acts 6, 4, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry of the word. That's what built the apostles. If your prayer life has gone down, your word study life has gone down, then this is the meeting between today and tomorrow. You must obtain grace from God to flog it out with destiny and fan these dimensions of your life back on fire. Apostle, but my mother is a prayer warrior. Let me assure you, there are wells that nobody can dig for you, especially in the days that are coming. Are we together? Mama can intercede for you, but when you stand face to face with real life situation, it is the people that know their God, not their neighbor's God, their God. Run away from spiritual laziness and obtain grace from God to settle down in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, what is the second spiritual strategy for these perilous times? Are you ready? I wrote here, walk, W-A-L-K, walk and live by the principles of the word of God. You want to thrive and command dominion even in these perilous times? You must walk and live by the principles of the word of God. Living your life just from a cultural standpoint, from a sociological standpoint, from a humanistic standpoint, just trusting your brain entirely will land you in disaster. You must submit yourself to walk and live by the principles of the word of God. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4, Jesus himself was speaking, resisting the devil now in his temptation. He answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. We don't just live by food. The quality of our lives and destinies are dependent or not just our knowing. Remember the Bible says, now that you know these things, it says, happy are you if you do them. There are people who are ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Listen, it is one thing to study and to know, but you must obtain grace to not only engage it, but to live it as a lifestyle. Your immunity in these times is derived from your living and walking by the principles 
of the scripture. Psalms 89 and verse 34. Is God speaking to someone? Psalm 89 and verse 34. Mm. You are the covenant keeping God. You are the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, covenant keeping God. It says, My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. This is a very powerful information about God. Do you know what covenant living is? Covenant living means to live with the consciousness that my victory and my excelling in life depends on me and God. Not God alone. Not me alone. My living and my excelling depends on my perpetual partnership between me and God. What is my own role? To walk in keeping with the provisions that command and commit his integrity. What is his own part? To make his word true in the life of the obedient believer. A covenant consciousness is a consciousness of partnership that it never depends on me alone and that it does not depend on God alone. As far as my excelling in life is concerned. Please look up. Please look up. If you do not make up your mind to live by the principles of the word of God, I assure you, no matter what you see in scripture, your life will perpetually be the opposite of all that you see. Because it is not just those who see it, but those who walk in keeping with the principles that commit God. Just because God is love, just because God is compassionate, does not mean he randomly commits himself to people. No. You have heard me say that scripture defines the boundary of our commitment or God's commitment to the believer. God is not indefinitely committed to the believer just without boundary. No. God himself submits to his word. The Bible says that he exalts his word even above his office. He can be moved over your situation. But it takes his word to move his hand to your rescue. Now, this is the balance to this dimension of God that most believers do not know. They rest in the fact that God is love. God forbid. He can't watch me suffer and just mind his business. You are joking. This God, until you understand the character and the power that was invested in the word of God. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth is out of course. I have said, ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high. It says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes. Please look up. Written in this scripture are promises. I have taught you this. That the Bible contains three things essentially. Number one, promises. Number two, principles. Number three, prophecies. Every time you open your Bible, you are interacting with three dimensions of spiritual realities. Number one, promises. Number two, principles. The modus operandi of the kingdom. Number three, prophecies. So before you ask God to come and play his role in your life, Make sure that you have walked in keeping. This is the whole idea of living by faith. Four times in scripture, the Bible says the just shall live by faith. In one of the expressions, it says the just shall live by his faith. So you have to find out what God has said. And then find out the conditions connected. Listen carefully. Don't just find out what God has said alone. Uh -uh. Finding out what God has said alone is not a fair Bible study. You must find out the point of commitment. 
That is a balanced study of scripture. What has God said? Deuteronomy chapter 28, for instance, from verse 1 and 2. It shall come to pass, give it to us please, if thou shalt diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord to observe and to do all that I command you this day, that the Lord God will set you on high above the nations of the earth. Next verse, it says, and these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake you. So don't just claim blessings and say I am above and not beneath. That is true, but that's not entirely true. Have you worked in keeping with the conditions that release the power of God on that wise? Are we together? Yeah. The Bible says, honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruit of all your increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and your vats to overflow. Don't claim overflow if you are not working with the conditions. This is where believers keep mocking themselves. God is not committed where your obedience has not been released. If it be thou, bid me come. The man would have said, I know you, you are a kind God. He would have remained there. Bid me come. Now I take that step. It is my responsibility to walk. And he took that step. And even when he sang, God took responsibility and brought him back up again. Someone's life is changing. In the name of Jesus Christ. For instance, please look up. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Don't just say, oh, I know that I'm the redeemed. Have you said it? It is a principle that whatever you are, say it. It's not just about the redeemed alone. Anything you believe that God has said you are, he says among the many principles that makes it manifest in your life, you must say, let the anointed of the Lord say so. Let the blessed of the Lord say so. Are we together now? Many people know so, but they don't say so. The power is released at the point of speaking. And God said, and there was. Not and God wanted, not and God taught. The Bible says where the word of a king is, there is power. There are many believers who keep speaking evil, speaking a lot of wrong things about their lives. And can I tell you this? Please look up. Most of you sadly believe that the more matured you are in the kingdom, the more you throw away these things. You call them elementary, so to say. Why do I need to speak the word of God? The times that we live in will surprise you if you ignore the simplicity of the principles of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Everything God has made you, say it, not once, perpetually. Philemon 1 and verse 6, that the communication of your faith might be effectual through the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ. And the greatest way to acknowledge is by verbalizing it. Lord, you have favored me. I decree and declare that I remain favored. I am blessed in the city. I am blessed in the country. A thousand falls by my side, ten thousand by my right side. None will hurt me. With my eyes will I see and behold. Can I tell you, God does not do what you want. God only does what he says. Genesis 21 verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah. 21 1 Genesis. Visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. If God has not said it, if he has not spoken it, the basis for performance is not there. Is someone learning? You must learn how to live by the principles of the word of God. I've taught you several principles through the years and connecting with our Sunday services and all that you receive even during Friday services here. They are, we continue to teach principles that help you. Let me give you an instance. Please look up. Let's assume you are in a financial situation right now or you are in any situation of loss. Anytime you are experiencing losses in your life, it's not business or investment or job that brings you out. Go and read your Bible. From Genesis to, Re to Revelation, it is the responsibility of the prophetic. That is God's authorized bailout system out of anything that is lost. Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And he said, where fell it? And the axe head floated. 
Now, when you live by the principles of the kingdom, you live by this. He spake a parable that men ought always to pray. Luke 18 and verse 1. And not to faint. If you are not prayerful, you are already violating the principles of the kingdom. Prayer is not for prayer warriors. Prayer is not for preachers. Prayer is for men. So the moment you realize that you are a man, the Bible mandates that you pray. Being prayerful is, is not, is not um, how do I put it now? It's a prerequisite for an excelling life. Whether you are an intercessor or not. Kingdom principles. Anything you want to build in your life, you require wisdom. He said, through wisdom is a house built. By understanding, it is established. And through knowledge, the rooms are filled with every pleasurable thing. Most of us have not found the place of wisdom. We have not seen the excellency of wisdom. In fact, the Bible puts it this way. It says, Christ is the power of God and Christ is the wisdom of God. When the anointing manifests, it manifests as the power of God and the wisdom of God. There are issues in your life that is not power you need. You need wisdom. There are issues in your life that you need power. It is still the ministry of the anointing. That when the anointing is released, it is manifested as the power of God and also the wisdom of God. Don't give the assignment of wisdom to power. Are we learning now? Kingdom principles. Apostle, I don't have any friend. I think it's just because I love God. No, the Bible says he that wants friends must show himself friendly. If you violate that principle, you may be the most anointed person in your life. You will never have anyone willing to invest their lives into yours. Let me tell you this. Please look up. The time has come for us to ask yourself, the values that I practice and the principles that I live by, where do they come from? Let God be true and every man a liar. When I came into Zaria, I was just looking around and you know, I've, I've received so many text messages from people. Apostle, times are hard. Finances, things are down as we are right now. We don't even know. And let me tell you, I sympathize with this, but can I tell you, my dear people, we are not the first to be at times like this. There was a time in the Bible they said money failed. Money failed. That people came and said buy us by the immutability of God's counsel if it is true that you engage the principles that that make for God's financial resources to come to you you will marvel and wonder let me give you a few of the principles number one there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth, the Bible says. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. But that is not the only principle. Principle number two, the gift of a man will make room for him and bring him before. So if you scatter alone and you are not valuable, you will still suffer because the equation is not complete. A lazy man will not plow by reason of the weather and he will beg in harvest. It is still part of the principle. Don't pick part of it. Pick the whole counsel. The challenge with believers is that we pick the most convenient part of kingdom principles that suit us and we find out it does not work. You must embrace the whole counsel that releases that dimension of God you desire. Convenient or not. That is where the grace of God comes in. So that where your strength would ordinarily not be able to help you through, you can now obtain that enabling grace. Is someone learning now? If the only thing you do is tithing and giving, dear people, hear me, resources will come, but you will not perpetuate wealth that way. There is a place of value. There is a place of relationships. There is the wisdom of increase. There is the law of management. These are all principles together. That make for increase which one have you neglected how about longevity do you know that there are kingdom principles that are allotted for longevity the first law of longevity is honor to parents in the Lord it says honor your father and your mother that your days may be long comma and it may be well with you it is a terrible thing for your days to be long and it's not well with you because you will pray for death 
Longevity is useless if it comes with a plethora of pain. So our society that has been trained to dishonor people spiritually and physically, dishonor elderly people, they are not intelligent, they didn't go to school, you are, you are authorizing the realm of the spirit to cut short your life. What is the second principle for longevity? I said before you life and death. I said before you blessing and cursing. Choose life. The first way to choose life is to verbalize it. Then in addition to it, you walk in keeping with the principles that are pro-life. For instance, taking care of your body. When you take care of your body, it is your commitment to tell God and the realm of the spirit that you intend to live long. You are careless with your body, eat anything, drink anything. You are signing up for death. Is someone hearing? Yes. Another principle of longevity, guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it comes the issue of life. Job said the things that I feared most has come upon me. You must protect your mind. Is God teaching us now? Yes. We must be honest and strong and matured to live by the principles of the kingdom. I submit to you that many believers are not living by the principles of the kingdom. Apostle, I want to excel. Okay? Show me the principle you know about excelling in life. Because the Bible relates excellence to something called an excellent spirit have you embraced it the name of the lord is not only great it is excellent oh lord our god how excellent is your name to excel means to surpass ordinary standards and excellence has principles one of the principles of excellence is to be thorough attention to details if you are not a thorough person in your life, you have neglected the law of excellence. There will be a side effect. Are we together now? Apostle, I want to see favor in my life. Show me what you know about favor. I know God favors people. You are right. But that will not bring you favor. God grants favor. I have asked him. He will give me. Yes, prayer is only one of the five keys that control favor. The first law of favor is honor. The second law of favor is productivity. The third law of favor is relationships. You see that? The fourth law of favor is impartation. You can't do one over six and expect favor to be lavishly at work in you. The real secret for favor is understanding. Proverbs 13, 15. It says, good understanding procured favor, but the way of the transgressor is hard. So there are many things we just shout around that does not speak in our lives because we are not working in keeping. Are you understanding point two now? That you want to thrive in these days. Your life. You must bring together all of the keys of the kingdom that you know and engage them with understanding. How about divine health? Is there such a reality as divine health? Absolutely. But what are the keys? What are the keys? Number one, the first law of divine health. Look up please. The first law of divine health is your words. Your words. Your words. Very important. Your words. Let the weak say, I am strong. Your words. Because when it has to do with living, you live through food and words. You are eating well, you are not speaking well, you will still die. Words. I shall not die. Believe and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. That's my confession even at this time. That I shall not die. But live and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. As simple as this sounds, even when you are sleeping, 
that word is on you. When the spirit of death comes, you are sleeping, but the word is awake. He says, what are you doing here? It, because there are rules of engagement even in the realm of the spirit. Just because you are sleeping does not mean the word sleep. They leave. Satan, come to me, Jesus said, and he found nothing. Jesus died because he laid down his life, not because he was overpowered. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. Ah. See, I may not have all the control I need over who gives me what and what I eat. So before it arrives, I prophesy. Shali saparu katiaba, mambraga doskadi bradiga dabasiata. No, I have no covenant with poison. I have no covenant with death in the pot. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me. Ah, lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me. Lives in me. Prophesy one time to your destiny. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me, lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me, lives in me. Don't wish it, say it. Well, Apostle, I don't want to speak like that. I don't want to sound all this Christian jingoism. I assure you, when that arrow leaves our place, because we will drive it through our words, it won't go back. It will still be roaming around, looking for who is careless. Don't just laugh. Take seriously what I'm saying. There are people who have died cheaply. Can I tell you the truth? Especially if you plan to serve God seriously your life will perpetually be a threat to the kingdom of darkness do you know the amount of prophecies i've received in my life in the last three or four years apostle be careful by genuine prophets i remember one day somebody i know not in this nation a very genuine prophet everything he has told me happened accurately to the digits and he said apostle be careful i saw an attack on you that day i was going somewhere i told him thank you Ah, it's not easy to die like that oh. so don't think I'm just here talking nonsense with you you ask the devil it's only when we go to heaven we will know how many times they have concluded that today finally and two weeks later you are still moving as if the devil does not exist look let me tell you this please look up do you know that don't feel bad if you've lost a loved one that's not the idea now that you are alive Focus on what God is doing in your life. Do you know that many, many days and months before people actually die, they are already dead in the realm of the spirit? Go and read your Bible in the book of Esther and you will find out that Haman consulted with diviners to know the day that they will strike. Job chapter 1 tells us that a meeting was happening in the realm of the spirit and they were concluding the destiny of a man. The man woke up one morning not knowing that that day disaster will start. Before it arrives, let your word stand as a city, as a defense and say, thus far have you come. His father did not know this, so you took him. The mother did not know this, so you took her. The sisters did not know this, but now let your words be a defense over you. Can I tell you this? Don't feel offended. We thank God for those who have gone. But hear me. The Bible does not say believers die. The Bible says believers sleep. And Paul said those who sleep, sleep at night. Don't come in the morning wanting me to sleep. No, we sleep at night. I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. Day is for walk. That is the scripture that you bring. Days for work. Why do you want me to sleep in the day?
please know this. Can I tell you? It is the gun you see or the knife that you see that makes you afraid. The one you don't see is the one machines cannot diagnose. You just know there is pounding headache and machines say you are absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. And you know that something is wrong. Some of you, by this revelation you are getting now, the devil is already threatened because you don't know what may have been on the schedule. Oh, their plans will fail again and again. Because the word of God stands and lives forever. Are you learning? Please sit down. You must learn to live by the word. Living carelessly, just living by instincts, by feelings will be a risk in this time. For instance, the Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. It's a risk to not be close to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Death can call you like an invitation and you can just carry yourself and get into trouble. There are people who left their houses because of insensitivity and lack of discernment. They went and landed into trouble. Somebody stole and just when police arrived, they were gathering everybody there. You were in your house minding your business and you say something push me as soon as you came out they said join them you see how people look for trouble you need high level sensitivity these are seasons where not every open door is god's door for you it's not satan does not only close doors he opens doors he can open a door for you you call it breakthrough and go and crash land yourself in trouble People are just jumping around and say, ah, there's one business like this. Everybody is doing it. No prayer, no counsel. The Bible says in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. You don't ask, you jump into it. And the next thing you just hear that they are calling you. You call your parents, say you're of age, please go. And you go and stand there and you begin a circle of pain. Is someone learning now? I remember one time in Zaria here, somebody told me that he used to hear a voice. He didn't know anything about the realm of the spirit and he would hear a physical voice. This is the voice of a departed person who had gone, calling him. You know, and he thought it was a dream. You know, like your sister, you, like you are, are dreaming, you are awake. And I told him, I said, listen, when you get up, don't just say yes and whatever it is. Yes, he's giving it permission. You take your Bible and say the living and the dead have nothing in common. There is, there, is, there is a gulf of separation. Don't answer yes to the call of death and die for no reason. You wake up and there is a demonic dream. They are throwing you inside coffin. They are burying you. When you get up, don't say I'm finished. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over that dream. Everything remains as a fiction in the realm of the spirit until your faith allows it to find expression here. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that I am exceptional. Say in the name of Jesus, I am anointed. Say in the name of Jesus, I am blessed. In the name of Jesus, I am favored. In the name of Jesus, the word of God defends me. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Decree and declare, say men are sent by God. To hold my hands and to lift me that when men say there is a casting down i make a declaration that for me and my family there will be a lifting up in the name of jesus christ that's how you live that's how you live you must convince yourself that this is the integrity of god's word Please sit down. Let's touch on the remaining two very quickly. Number three. What is the third strategy for these perilous times? Are you ready? Number three. Embrace unity and the power of corporate Christian living. Embrace unity and the power of corporate Christian living. Hmm. Write it down, please. Embrace unity 
and the power of corporate Christian living. Hebrews chapter 10 from verse 24 and 25. There is a dimension of God's power that is invested in unity and in a Christian community living. In fact, you've heard me say this, that the key to sustaining kingdom values is Christian community living. While it is true that we must be people of the secret place, when it has to do with excelling in the cosmos, believers must know the power of unity and the power of corporate living. Isolation is a risk, especially at times like this. It says, let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Verse 25. Let us not forsaking the assembling of ourselves as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Can I tell you this? Corporate living, community living is a very powerful principle for living and surviving in the cosmos especially among believers most believers neglect the fellowship of the brethren they neglect interacting with other a larger body of believers and sometimes that happens in this deception and isolation of wanting to know God for myself on one hand that is right I just taught you but on another there is a difference between solitude and isolation solitude is good because you are spending time with God isolation is the devil deceiving you to strike you now watch this how many of you have seen coal when you are burning coal to cook with red hot coal just carry the tongue and pick one hot one and just drop it don't do anything what begins to happen to it it goes down this is what is happening to many of you you've heard me say that one of the ways that the devil destroys and damages your spiritual life is to give you an impression that you are superior and better than everybody what can i receive from my pastor i have more revelation than him i the man is not even doing all, and that pride will bring believers into a point of isolation that's it let me tell you this community living is a is powerful because among the many things it does it can help to bring checks and balances to your life somebody can easily observe when you practice community christian living that something has been wrong with your prayer life everybody will be afraid but one or two people will have the courage to approach you in love and say i've noticed that um, you are not really open for prayer. What's the problem? And the Holy Spirit will echo through their words and jack up your prayer life. It is dangerous when you are alone, especially in pride. Because even at the height of your fall, Satan will still flatter you that you are alright until the day he strikes you once and is done with you. Are we together? Yes. Community living. When you read your Bible, Jesus was never, there were few times when he was alone and only to retreat and sleep. Even as Jesus, angels ministered to him, they always came around him. And then he was with his disciples and he was with the brethren. Read your Bible. Time for koinonia. No, no, no. There's nothing there. I'm not, there's... Um, I will just, I will download the message one day. That's how it starts. The trap of deception. Community living is powerful. Even from a security standpoint. For, for years in this ministry, and I think we still do. We have the database by the grace of God of the membership. So that if for any reason there is a call for any security response. I think that 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 um, that became weak when this DND thing and the rest had started coming. If not, I remember, and we had enjoyed it. The first time we used it was after one post-election violence. I think it was in 2011 or so, and then the other one that happened. I can't, I can't remember now what what year it happened. It is very very important. Community living can help to protect you. 
there are many of you who for instance i'm showing you wisdom keys you can get up just because you have some money and enter a community where you are the only person of faith and now dwell smuggle yourself in one apartment where everybody is not around only you the thief does not need to hide he will open the door and say i'm a thief i'm here just come out and lie down and keep shouting while I steal. Because nobody will hear you from that point. These are wisdom principles that believers don't have. There are times that some of you have sent me text messages and say, I am at so-and-so place and I told them, no, look for a house, so-so-so -so place. I can support you. From me, I, 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 are you getting blessed now? I'm, I'm trying to be very sincere with you. Especially if you're a family person. You are moving to a region there are things you should look at the proximity to security aid proximity to medical aid proximity to the market these are some of the things they teach this in architecture urban and regional planning this is not even just about spirituality there are factors that you look at how many minutes will it take you so that you don't die the death of a fool there are many people who would have been rescued on many grounds if only they were within a space and a community where they will help him there was a time that the apostle wanted to enter a city and he was afraid he said do not be afraid i have many people in this city are we together it is very very important there are many things we have done as a ministry by the privilege of god's grace we've invested through the years to maintain strategic relationships first out of a heart of love but then by wisdom to maintain relationship across religions and the rest with people as much as God will grant us that grace and it has worked in many regards community living is a very powerful key there are some of you you don't know anybody in the house of God as soon as they share the grace, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, you look at everybody and say, oh, you poor are superior. My father is a senator. My mother is a, works in NMPC. And you push down everybody. That's, and that person you are pushing has access to 10 soldiers and 5 policemen. He has their number. Be fruitful means be relational. If you are not relational, you cannot be fruitful. Are we together? community living there are times you may not even have the faith to pray maybe something has happened to you a loved one is sick you need brethren to agree with you you are not in any department you're not anywhere and you just call anybody and say okay i'm a member of koinonia gather everybody to pray for me what department i don't have any department you just you see it's going to be difficult even in the area of receiving aid and help there are people who go to every church and say i'm a christian and say they must help you there is no ministry that works like that no matter how compassionate you can't show up in people's destinies and say give me uh, this thing worship team is celebrating something you come and sit down there too you collect from there prayer depart and you are not committed anywhere community living is powerful hallelujah a number of you here I presume have never really seen a crisis my stay and my time in Joss and Zaria have been exposed to a few a few crisis periods I remember four days before 9-11 7-11 was when the first major in our modern story now of just crisis happened and the strength of the believers was they are being united together around even if you don't have the power of defense at least you are around where they can disseminate information don't downplay what i'm telling you i'm not scaring you i'm only saying there needs to be wisdom there are some of you right now as weak as you are you are the strongest person among everybody you know you are in trouble are we together yes community living there are many people who have been rescued simply because certain things the aid was close to them because of the power of community living
Survival strategy number three, embrace unity and corporate Christian living. Embrace unity and corporate Christian living. Please look up. Let me tell you this. <clears throat> to live with other people, unity has a price. You must invest in the well-being of people too. You never tell anybody happy birthday. You never tell anybody happy anniversary. You are in your world all by yourself. Good things are happy. You don't have a friend. There is nothing from you. Your one naira has never been spent to buy somebody a shoe to say, God bless you. I assure you, when the dark days come, everybody will leave you that way. You know, growing up as little children, we used to see our dear parents. Every wedding, they are there. Every burial, you are there. And you'll be wondering, is, what this people, is it? Must you be everywhere? The foolishness of children. Now that God has helped us to grow, we can see the wisdom behind what they are doing. It's an investment. First, it's out of love, but it's also an investment. You are not there when another person's child is getting married. Your child too will marry. You are not there when somebody is crying. You too, one day, you will find cause for tears. A word is enough for the wise. Are we together? The body of believers are celebrating something. It's none of your business. Some of you hear that a particular church or denomination or whatever it is, is having a program. You can sleep even if it's 2,000 naira. It doesn't matter whether it's your church or not. Oh, pastor, it may not be much, but just buy a recharge card with it. Can I tell you, the days that we're living, your survival will be more than my church mentality. It has to be a body of Christ mentality. Are we together now? Yes. There are cheap victories that we will lose if we do not understand the power of unity. May God grant us grace to be united in the name of Jesus Christ. Number four. What is the fourth strategy for surviving at these times? Write this down. The preserving power of priestly and prophetic blessings. The fourth biblical strategy that grants you the capacity to thrive and to command dominion even at perilous times. I wrote here the preserving power of priestly and prophetic blessings. The preserving power of priestly and prophetic blessings. Hmm. Can I tell you this? Please look up. I assure you by God that aside from the Old Testament or the Old and the New Covenant, that God has personal covenants with men. I hope you know that. That by reason of our personal work with God, we can get to a point where God brands his dealings with us through the sacrifice of alignment, the election of grace, God can brand his dealing with a man through covenant. And that gives that man a unique and superior platform to deal with God. It is true. There are people in the Bible called the friends of God. He didn't call everybody friend. When it was time for God to come and destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, you thought he would just come to people at random. He came to one man. In fact, let's look at it. I, I think I wrote it down here. Genesis chapter 18, please. From verse 17. I don't know where we'll stop, but at least let's start from 17. Genesis 18. Please give it to us. This is God coming down to meet Abraham. He's about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Question. Was Lot not a righteous man? He was a righteous man, but God did not come to Lot. He came to Abraham, and here's what God said. And the Lord said, 1817 Genesis, Shall I hide from Abraham the thing which I do? This is friendship now. Next verse. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed by him. Uh-huh. Next verse. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him. That they shall keep the way of the Lord. To do justice and judgment. That the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he had spoken of him. Now follow carefully. Since we've started reading, let's just finish up. And the Lord said, 
because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great and because their sin is very grievous I will go down now and see whether they have done together according to the cry of it which is come unto me and if not I will know and the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom but Abraham stood yet before the Lord watch friendship this is a superior level of relationship and Abraham drew near and said will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked there are men and there are men we are all sons of God but I assure you aside from the general platform where God relates and deals with people there are privileges that people have accessed in God by reason of the sacrifice of alignment or they have assumed a status in the kingdom called the friend of God I hope that one day God will grant us grace and I will teach you what it means to be a friend of God hmm. most people sing it carelessly and we think a friend of God just means the one that God loves no 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 the friend of God you see it is a status that God can grant and confer upon you there are many privileges that come with being a friend of God one of it is that as a friend of God you cannot go to hell if for any reason you choose to start going down he will take your life physically but not that you go to hell leave that for another discussion paradventure if they, now watch this paradventure he's discussing now if there be 50 righteous within a city who is negotiating now when Zechariah begged remember Zechariah in the Bible Zechariah tried this thing Abraham is doing as a prophet what happened there were consequences Zechariah's mouth was shut until John was born and here is a man 50 righteous within that city will thou also destroy and spare not the place for the 50 next verse it says that be far from thee to do this after the manner to slay the righteous with the wicked and that the righteous should be as the wicked that be far from thee shall not the judge of all the earth do right look at look at look at who, who the man this guy's not praying oh he's talking to god next verse the Lord said, if I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sake. Sin 2. And Abraham answered and said, behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. This man. Next verse. Per adventure, there shall lack five of the 50 righteous. Will thou destroy the city for lack of five? And he said, if I find 40 and five, I will not destroy it and he spake unto him yet again and said remember all this politics is there is it's just a family he wants to defend lot per adventure next verse you see you're already tired even you who is reading the story you're already weary and say what is he looking for those are the privileges that love and friendship provide and he said unto him Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Per adventure, there shall 30 be found. And he said, I will not do it if I find 30 there. We're reading to 33. And he said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. Per adventure, there shall be 20 found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for 20 sake. He didn't stop there, 33. And he said, oh, let not the Lord be angry. I will speak yet but this once. Per adventure ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy for ten sake. 33. And the Lord went his way. As soon as he had left communion, he called all that thing communion. It was not a question and answer session. The Bible says it was what? Communion. And Abraham returned to his place. Can I tell you the truth? There are people who have found power with God. There are people who have found grace with God. When he met that young virgin girl, he said, you are favored, highly favored. 
it was because she was highly favored that she asked the angel the same thing Zechariah asked. How shall these things be? Seeing that I know not a man, he took time to explain to her carefully. Zechariah was anointed but was not highly favored. Are we together? Ezekiel chapter 22 from verse 30 and 31. Popular scripture. I sought for a man among them. We're cutting because of time so we'll wrap up now. I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it but I found none. Next verse. Therefore I have poured out my indignation upon them i have consumed them with the fire of my wrath he says their own way have i recompensed upon their head saith the lord god i sought for a man i sought for a man isaiah 65 and verse 8 very powerful scripture very powerful scripture thus saith the lord please look up as the new wine is found in the cluster and one saith, destroy it not. Why? For there is a blessing in it. So I will do for my servant's sake. Not for their sake. For my servant's sake. That I may not destroy them all. Destroy it not. It means that there are individuals that God has granted grace. They can plead the cause by reason of the priestly and the prophetic office. They can stand and declare that you are blessed you are tempting me to go to numbers 23 let's try it numbers 23 let's start from verse 1 let's see if we can cut it numbers 23 uh, remember this is the story of Balaam and Barak let me read a bit of it for you and Balaam said unto Balak build their seven altars and prepare here seven oxen and seven rams uh-huh and Balak said, and Balak did as Balaam had spoken. And Balak and Balaam offered every altar a bullock and a ram. Uh huh. Let's hurry up. And Balaam said unto Balak, watch this now. Stand by thy burnt offering and I will go. Per adventure, the Lord will come to me. And whatsoever he showeth me, I will tell you. And he went on to a high place. And God met Balaam and said unto him, I have prepared seven altars and I have offered upon every altar a bullock and a ram. Verse 5. And the Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth and said, Return to Balak and thus shalt thou speak. Verse 6. And he returned unto him and lo, he stood by his burnt sacrifice and all the princes of Moab. Remember, they were trying to woo the prophet to curse God's people. And he took up his parable and said, Balak the king of Moab had brought me from Aram out of the mountains of the east saying, Come, curse me Jacob and come, defy Israel. This is what he wanted. I want to curse Jacob and his generation. This is what it means. Next verse. Nine. How shall I curse whom God had not cursed? And how shall I defy whom the Lord has not defied? For from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I behold him. Lo, the people shall dwell alone, and shall not be reckoned among the nations. Verse 10. Who can count the dust of Jacob, and number the fourth part of Israel? Let me die the death of the righteous, and let my last end be like this. He's speaking a parable. And Balak said to Balaam, watch this. What hast thou done unto me, he said. I took thee to curse my enemies and behold, thou hast blessed them altogether. May that be so for someone in the name of Jesus Christ that anything that looks or it represents a curse that when it gets to you, there is already a build up of priestly and prophetic blessings. Hallelujah. Next verse. And he answered and said, must I not take heed to speak that which the Lord has put in my mouth. He's saying it's not my fault. 
And Balak said unto him, Come, I pray thee, with me to another place. They shifted another location. From whence thou see, may I see them. Thou shalt see but the utmost part of them, and shall not see them all, and cause me them from thence. So he took him to another location, and he brought him into the field of Zophim, and built there seven altars, and offered a bullock and a ram again. 15. Watch what happened. And he said unto Balak, Stand by here by thy bond offering while I meet the Lord yonder. In fact, let's jump to verse 20. Let's jump to verse 20. We'll end with 23. Behold, he now went again. I have received commandment to bless. And he hath blessed. And I cannot reverse it. I cannot reverse it. No enchantment and no divination against Jacob. This is the scripture if you are looking for where it is. Next verse. Behold, he said, had, he had not held iniquity in Jacob, neither had he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord is God. The Lord is God is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. 22. God brought them out of Egypt. He hath, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. The last verse now, we'll just stop at 23. Surely, Harakosiata, there is no enchantment against Jacob. Neither is there any divination against Joshua Selman. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and Israel, what had God wrought? That means there is no enchantment. No matter the ill speakings of people, there is an immunity that the priestly and prophetic blessing brings upon your life. In the name of Jesus, we are going to speak over your life this night. And every yoke of darkness, every enchantment that is not of God, standing your way by the power that raised Christ from the dead, it must give way over your life. You are blessed and that no man can cause you. Hallelujah. The preserving power of priestly and prophetic blessings. Please stand. We're going to pray. Numbers chapter 6. Let's start from verse 22. Number 6, 22. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and to his sons, saying on this wise shall thou bless the children of israel saying unto them the lord bless thee and keep thee the lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee the lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give you peace next verse and they shall put my name upon the children of israel and i will Bless them. Amen. 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 The Lord sent me here tonight to hand you these keys that it is possible to win and to rise even in perilous times. That when men say there is a casting down, there is a system, there is a strategy already built by the intelligence of God. Strategy number one is that you are strong in the Lord. Your strength derived from your knowing Him. The study of scripture, a rich prayer life, a passion for fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Number two, the determination to live by the principles of the kingdom. Having the readiness to judge every disobedience if and when your obedience is complete. When you live by the principles of the kingdom, now you are walking by faith. You can commit God's integrity through the thick and thin to come for you. Listen, we are not the first, you know, um, a few days ago, I was watching Kenneth Copeland. He's in his 80s now. There are a few people I've met and I'm having a heightened regard and respect, especially for elderly people.
who are of faith and have survived whose lives have become testaments because I'm seeing and realizing again afresh that this journey is far and God has granted me the privilege of meeting a few people the oldest of them will soon be 90 now these men are alive healthy sound I was watching Kenneth Copeland this man in his 80s he still flies himself he walks strong he's not holding a stick dentition complete his brain still working with intelligence he remembers everything and this man said this thing in the days of his youth and has proved it with his life the bible says we should follow them there are some them who through faith and patience believe me with childlike faith have obtained the promise many have come with arrogance calling them children they are nowhere to be found today but these people have stood the test of time I remember one of our dear fathers, Bishop Onubogu. Many of you have met him, especially those in Abuja. That man is going to be, I think he's 84 this year or 85. You will run with him and he will run faster than you. Strong and alive, agile and powerful in his right mind. And when I sit with him, I don't do man of God, apostle. I just say, Daddy, please. When you were my level, what did God, what did you do? They would describe for you every negative thing that has happened on earth from the time they were born. Some of them were face to face with danger. They met armed robbers many times with guns and whatever and they are still there standing strong. It would take a fool to not think they have something to say. Are we together? We are privileged to have our fathers here. And most of these people began ministry before some of us were born. And they are still standing today. Some of us have come with our youthful gyration and we are nowhere to be found. But they are standing strong, alive and on fire. Let me tell you the truth. When God brings this kind of people to your life and they speak over your life, they draw from the depth of their covenants with God. And when they make decrees over your life, heaven stamps it. Hallelujah. Remember, I told you my experience in Ekiti. I've shared it with you. Those, those old people that went to kneel down for them to pray over me. You thought that they would look at you and say, Oh, man of God, you are the one I've been hearing about. They kneel down. And the man began to rant prophecies in Yoruba. And in all fairness, I didn't care what he was saying. All I know is whoever God preserves like this, for someone to die at 136. 136 standing and went honorably. And his wife, that man's wife was still standing there. Most likely 100 and something. I don't know, I can't remember exactly what. Standing, you would think she's my elder sister. Can I tell you? Your limitation is relative. There are people who God, by the privilege of God's grace and the power of light, has lifted them beyond what is a limitation for you. Let me tell you something with going through the valley of the shadow of death. When you come out of uncomfortable situations, you never come alone. You come out with an anointing, a grace that can now empower people. A woman who just gets married and gives birth, that's wonderful. But a woman who has survived the mockery and the pain for decades, when that woman gives birth, it's not only a child that will come out, it's a child and a mantle. Two things will come out from her womb. Anybody she prays for, from the depth of her pain, I tell you, a man of God who may have suffered in ministry, gone through pain, when that man stands to bless you out of his pain, scars as treasures in the realm of the spirit he said let no man trouble me for i bear upon my body the mark of christ why do we honor those who have gone ahead of us we don't just honor their bodies we honor the sacrifice many of them have made mistakes they have used their lives as guinea pigs for you to escape when you get to heaven today you will know jesus not just by the crown on his head and the glory around him he will be the only one carrying a unique scar on his hand. Are we together? Listen to me. There are all kinds of sounds 
rumors of wars. I keep in touch with Zaria and we've seen the things that have happened in Kaduna and all of that. Our military people, they give us intelligence report and all the things that have happened in time past the uh, blast of the train and several things and believers now are in fear and even in Zaria pockets of things kidnappings let me tell you this among the many things I came to do two assignments number one is to strengthen you to let you know that there is nothing new under the sun There is nothing under the sun, new under the sun. I remember when I was staying in Daraka. In fact, there was a time that I would be studying and the thief would come. He would open the window. I would just say, Kai, and he would just go. Because I, I mean it, I stand by the God of heaven. Like literally, I'm not, I'm not lying. I, I, there was no point chasing him again. It was... It was I wish I could sing this song. There'll be victory in that camp at the shout of El Shaddai. Every enemy will flee from the fire. Something like that. No, no, no. Don't even try it. If you don't know it, we'll sing another song and pray. Are we together? Can I tell you this? Refuse. Listen to my message. Fear no evil. You can listen to it. I preach it here on this altar. Fear no evil. Fear no evil. I refuse to fear. The Lord stands by me like a mighty, terrible warrior. I'm not alone. I'm no longer slave to fear. I am a child. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Now hear me. We're going to pray these four strategies into our lives. Strategy number one, be strong in the Lord. Lord, grant me the grace to know you in a deeper and a richer way. Someone open your mouth and begin to pray. I obtain grace to know you, to know you, to know you, to know you, to know you through the study of scripture, to know you in the place of prayer, to know you in the place of fellowship. I draw my strength from my union with Christ. I am one with Him, victorious with Him, raised up with Him, triumphant with Him. Now hear me. Listen. You are going to pray for the grace to live by the principles of the kingdom. But you cannot live by what you don't know. Lord, a passion to search and know the principles of the kingdom and the grace to live by them. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray from the depth of your heart. The passion to search the scripture. To understand your way, your modus operandi, your principles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, look up, please. This third prayer on unity, we are going to double it to pray for the church in Zaria, regardless what denomination. 
we are going to say, Lord, let your body stand as one. One formidable force. Yes, we may not agree here and there doctrinally. We may have reservations, but it's too small a reason to divide us. Because let me tell you, we only stand when we are united. Open your mouth and pray for the grace to be united and then extend it to pray for the church in Zaria. Go ahead and pray. Lord, we pray for every man of God. We intercede for every woman of God. Every church that calls upon the name of Jesus. Let there be the unity of faith in the name of Jesus Christ. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray for believers in Zaria that we will stand as one. Lifting the banner and the anthem of Jesus. In spite and despite our differences. Pray for your church. Pray for your pastor. Pray for your assembly. Pray for the body of Christ in Zaria. Lord, from the north to the south, east and the west of this region, we declare unity of faith in the name of Jesus unity in prayer unity in conviction in defense of the truth hallelujah still on point three you're going to pray Lord grant me the grace to appreciate the ministry of the body the ministry of the body of Christ the ministry of the body of Christ beginning from your department wherever you are walking to every other expression go ahead and pray I obtain the grace to tap into the multifaceted dimensions invested across the body of Christ unity for there the Lord had commanded the blessing for there the Lord had commanded the blessing for there the Lord had commanded the blessing hallelujah now very quickly the last point you are going to declare father the prophetic covering the prophetic grace even upon this ministry it will work in my life and then you pray that the prophetic words that are about to come now Lord they stand as a scriptural defense in the name of Jesus open your mouth and pray the covenant of God that backs what we do it will work for your people by the power of the holy ghost it will work for your people the privilege of the priestly and the prophetic blessing In the name of Jesus. Listen. I can tell you that among the many things that lift and keep people above is the power of priestly and prophetic blessings. What is on your head matters. Oh. Thou anointest my head with oil. I see what is on my head by looking at my cup. You don't anoint the cup. You anoint the head. If the cup is empty, don't blame the cup. There is something that has not come on your head. Are we together? I believe in priestly and prophetic blessings. I continue to receive them every time God grants me the privilege and the opportunity. I receive them. Every time. I'm a product of many anointings and the prophetic blessings of many vessels in the body within this nation and across the globe. I have 
blessed and it cannot be reversed. Can I tell you, it is true that who God has blessed by, no man can cause. Except if it's not the genuine blessing that comes upon them. We will wrap up today's meeting by making these decrees. We are entering a session of decrees. You don't have to kneel. You can kneel down and still not receive. The most important thing is your heart to be open. Are we together? I think we'll do it. I know that our time, I intended for us to end by nine on the dot so that we don't keep us waiting. But I will do it this way. We'll just, we'll do it very fast. I will plead with, I know that our fathers are here. We'll just, even if it's just one, one minute, we'll start with, um, we'll start with our mother. Let her come representing mothers. Our mommy, Dr. Mrs. Onu, she will come and make decrees just in one minute. And then Reverend Ubandoma, I will plead with him to come and make decrees in one minute. And then our fathers here, our father, Pastor Bakwak, and then our father, Daddy Tula, and we'll wrap up with our daddy trough. And then I will just speak words. We're going to make this decrees. Listen, as I'm standing here, I'm going to be receiving myself. These are not the times to be careless with prophetic words. These are not the times to be careless with prophetic words. Can you get a mic? Okay, please, mommy. She will make a decree, prophetic decree, in the name of Jesus. Yes, ma'am. In Jesus' name. Amen. Tonight, oh, Father, we thank you for this hour. We thank you for the grace that is available here. Amen. Lord, we receive grace, Lord, to live for you all the days of our life. Amen. Lord, we shall not be disobedient children. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please hand it to Reverend. Make sure your heart is open. Very simple but powerful decrees. We are making decrees by the Spirit of the Living God. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. We, we, we are not unaware of the days that we are in. Mm. But we are more conscious of the God that is with us. This is one thing I say over believers lately. No matter the little time I have. That no evil shall befall you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. No plague shall come near your dwelling. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. the cry of evil and misfortune is far from your camp and your territory. Amen. In the name of Jesus, angels have charge over you. In the name of Jesus, they keep you. In the name of Jesus, the cry of evil and misfortune is far from your territory. In the name of Jesus, with long life, with long life, you are satisfied. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Our Father, Pastor Bakwa, please hand the mic to him. Still in the attitude of receiving, receive these prophetic words from our fathers. Yes, sir. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I stand to decree whatever you have lost in time past, you will recover it. Amen. I decree you will recover it. Amen. There shall be total turning around in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus, there shall be no lost. There shall be no lost. There shall be no loss. There shall be no loss. There shall be no loss. You will pursue. You will overtake. And you will recover all. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. In the name of Jesus. My short living in Zaria, I've seen many things. Came to Zaria in 1979. I'm about 43 years in Zaria. All the crises that happened in this country are witnesses with my eyes. But the God of heaven preserved me. The God of heaven preserved me. The God that has never forsaken me will never forsake you. <laughs> Your life is eating with Christ in God. <laughs> the psalmist says, I was young and now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. Neither is seed begging for bread. As long as the Lord lives, you will never beg for bread. <laughs> I say you will never beg for bread. 
Your life shall be a testament. Your life will bless many. In Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, there's a generation you say you have set light upon them and they can never be hidden. I decree that in your generation, darkness will cease to operate in the name of Jesus. The glory of all glory, the mercy of all mercy, the favor of all favor, let it settle upon you in the name of Jesus. King shall bow before you in Jesus' name. You will speak and the world will change. 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 Prepare your ways, God. Prepare your ways. Perfect your ways. Perfect your ways. This is an altar of altars. This glory of glories. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. And finally, let me just speak over your life. In the name of Jesus. When men say there is a casting down, I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus. For you it shall be that there is a lifting up. In the name of Jesus Christ. The sound of mourning and languishing will be far from you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. Anyone here appointed unto death. I speak to that spirit of death. You pass over them now. The spirit of the grave. I curse you right now in the name of Jesus. Hear me. Anywhere where there will be war or fight, may your feet not get there. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of prophecy, I place a mark upon you. No devil will kidnap you. No devil will kidnap your loved ones. In the name of Jesus. Hear me. In the name of Jesus. I come by the voice of the apostolic and the prophetic and I speak over Zaria. If there are any foreigners or strangers within this land, I stand upon this ground. May the earth fight them this night. Shabrakatabakatos. We release the forces of judgment from the realm of the spirit. It will fight them to their grave. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me? And if there is any gang up happening now for any crisis to happen, for any bloodshed, the spirits of bloodshed walking around, I decree and declare, we use new extension here as a point of contact, and we decree and declare, there shall be no bloodshed. There shall be no bloodshed. In the name of Jesus, we pray for the Nigerian army, the police, and the civil defense, all of the security forces. We declare, may they apprehend every criminal. They are empowered by the Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Psalm 3, please give it to us. Psalm 3, media, please help us. We are praying, we are wrapping up. Please take it down for me. Lord, how they are increased that trouble me. Many are they that rise up against me. Verse 2. Many are they which say of my soul, there is no help for thee in God. Verse 3. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter up of my head. Verse 4. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, 
and he heard me out of his holy hills five i laid me down and slept i awake for the lord sustained me from this night you will sleep and wake up sound in the name of jesus christ because the keeper of israel who does not sleep nor slumber will protect you in the name of jesus christ and hear me hear me because of the several things happening around zaria and environs from the sadly the closure of institutions and then because of the fear and insecurity many people have had to go to find refuge or some even relocated sadly i came the last time and i saw what happened in graceland over i think arguably about 200 houses if i'm not mistaken about 500 or so houses and so several people so it's 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 looking like it's becoming a desolate place but let me tell you in the name of jesus even as there was darkness in egypt and light in goshen i prophesy unto you that in the name that is above all names in this season you will not see shame strange supplies will come from everywhere for you and your children in the name of jesus christ Watch this. Historically, every time there is this kind of thing, the spiritual lives of people usually is part of the many things that suffers. Because uh, people don't have time for fellowships. I think this is about the longest Koinonia has stayed now, I'm sure, in a while. Because I gave them instruction to make sure that we finish on time so people can go. This is because it's a special session we're having here. It shouldn't be that somebody wakes up in the morning for God's sake and cannot go out in peace and return in peace. But how many of you know that everything that happens physically is an answer to something in the realm of the spirit? Therefore, we stand as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. The spirits that have come into Zaria, this is not the first time they are here. They have come before and they were sent back. The same grace that sent them back before sends them back again sends them back again the spirits of the waster the spirit of death the spirit of spiritual lukewarmness we call you by your name and we punish you by the god of heaven in the name of jesus christ we declare peace over the spiritual gates of zaria we declare peace over the spiritual gates of kaduna in the name of jesus listen supernaturally we stand here tonight we anoint all the physical entrances to zaria whether coming from katsina coming from all of these places we declare the seal of the blood upon them that everything that is for destruction will not cross there in the name of jesus christ two more prayers and we're done I want to rebuke the spirit of poverty. I have gotten several text messages from people saying, Apostle, please help. Sorry, we are, not, we are not trying to take advantage of you, but as it is right now, if you don't help us, our children, do you know sometimes physical tears come out of my eyes and I say, God, this should not be. Why will a woman, a man, and the children simply because of the times? Because in truth, in many regards, the economy of zaria revolves around education and all the things that are happening so when there is a shutdown of this sort it affects many other business others may leave the city to do some other businesses somewhere father upon everyone who the seal of the blood is upon i decree and declare by the power that raised christ from the dead may you raise strange financial support strange financial support for your people raise it for their families oh god in the name of jesus i command the raven that brought bread for elijah at brook cherry let it come in the form of man let it come in the form of destiny help us no church will go down no family will go down in the name of jesus christ In the name of Jesus Christ. 
And finally, let me pray for you. In 2018, I remember sharing a bit of it once here. I woke up to a very strange and disturbing vision. In that vision, I saw that it was a crisis. 2018. It was when I came out of the vision that I even knew that I was in a vision. Because I saw several things happening. It was like a disruption of peace. And I started asking questions. I said, ah, ah, when did this happen? Yes, there have been pockets of troubles in Zaria, but when did Zaria become like Meduguri? And it disturbed me a, a lot. I remember taking times to pray and fast to say, Lord, it shall not stand. Can I tell you this? This is the season where the ministry of watchmen must not die. Hear me. This is the season where the ministry of watchmen. I'm not just talking of prayer groups for others. Every family must be intentional about the ministry of strategic and prophetic intercession. Are we together? Yes. I have set watchmen upon your walls that they will give him no rest until you establish Jerusalem as your praise. As for me, I have a responsibility to pray for you and I will continue to pray for you without fail. But I assure you by God that you have a role to play. Everybody must become an intercessor for the sake of the times that we are in. Don't fold your arms and say there are other prayer warriors, there's prayer department, there are this. No, you must obtain grace to engage. Especially for some of you, you are the most sound person spiritually within your family. The rest may not have known these principles. That's why God sent you as light there. That while they are catching up, you must stand like that man who becomes the bridge and refuse that in the name of Jesus Christ, blood will not drip from this house on account of terrorism. So let me encourage you, my dear people, find rest. Find rest. God is still the God of Zaria. God is still God over Kaduna State. Are we together now? Yes. Tomorrow, if we have the time, I will request that we sing before the miracle service only Yeshua, that song. There are thrones. We need to drum it over Zaria that there might be many thrones, there might be many gates and kingdoms, but we have come to lift up the banner of only one, the ancient of days, that he remains king of kings and lord of lords. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. As you return home, you go in peace. You return tomorrow with joy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Let's share the grace together in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.